The government has frozen household energy bills at £2,500 for now, and many of us are breathing a sigh of relief. But to freeze those energy bills, the government also decided to directly subsidize the profits of private companies to the tune of £120 billion. Here's why that's a totally irrational decision, and why it won't do anything to resolve fundamental issues in our privatized energy system that enabled this crisis in the first place. Unlike many countries in the world, the UK's energy system is almost entirely privately owned. It's a system with several separate links in a chain. And to understand why the system is so broken and why your energy bills are so high, it's worth taking a look at each link. At the start of the chain are fossil fuel companies like BP and Shell, who sell gas to generating companies. Those are the ones who own the big power stations. The big energy suppliers that you have a contract with, they buy this energy from generating companies so that they can sell it off to households and businesses at a profit. The problem is suppliers like British Gas and Eon, they don't have the infrastructure to get this power from where it's generated into your home. So in between are two more layers of private companies. There's national grid which carries energy across the country and there are the electricity and gas networks which own the infrastructure that takes energy from the national grid into local areas. Both these parts of the chain, national grid and the electricity and gas networks, they function as monopolies. They alone own and control the infrastructure that transfers energy around the country and into your home. And they turn huge profits by charging fees to suppliers who then pass on those costs to you. In fact, the energy and gas networks had the highest profit margins of any sector of the UK economy in 2021. Our energy system adds a markup at every single link in this chain so that companies can pay out huge sums to their wealthy shareholders. In fact, over this past year, as our bills skyrocketed, Shell, BP, and the other fossil fuel giants, they made record profits nearly 100 billion pounds in the first three months of this year alone. That money could have been used to lower our energy bills and to invest in renewables, but instead these companies just shoveled billions straight out the door to their shareholders. So why have we decided to organize our system this way? The argument behind private control of energy is that it was meant to be more efficient, with competition meaning lower bills for households and the profit motive driving investment and world-class infrastructure. Has privatization delivered on any of this? The answer is no. Even before the massive surge in gas prices this year, our energy system was failing to provide for ordinary people. By April of this year, nearly 7 million people already lived in fuel poverty. Before the price freeze was brought in, this was projected to hit two thirds of all UK households. That's two in three people unable to afford to heat their homes. And as of late September, even with the price freeze, 11 million people were reported to be behind on their bills and 5 million were skipping meals just to keep the lights on. Our reliance on global fossil fuel imports and the fact that we peg our electricity price to the cost of gas makes this system incredibly volatile. It also compromises our energy security. And while the UK has made some impressive progress in rolling out clean energy, this isn't due to the goodwill of energy executives. Instead, it's targeted public subsidies that have been necessary to make this happen. Basically, the Conservatives are refusing to face up to the real issue. The real issue is that our reliance on fossil fuels makes us all vulnerable, whether it's our cost of living or the cost of climate catastrophe. It never made any sense to sell off our energy system to corporations run for private profit. Now we're suffering the consequences of that decision. Whether it's subsidizing companies or intervening to keep bills from soaring, the government has had to pay out vast sums just to keep this system functioning. And crucially, the government asks for almost nothing in return. It's worth pointing out that we've already got substantial public ownership in the UK's energy system. It's just that the owners are the governments of other countries. In fact, 44% of the UK's offshore wind is owned by overseas governments. Denmark, Italy, Malaysia, the United Arab Emirates, even the city of Munich, they all own more of the UK's offshore wind capacity than the UK public. So what do they know that we don't? These governments know that clean energy is both vital for society and a great investment in the future. This isn't an opportunity that we can afford to miss. It's time to bring public ownership back into our energy system so we can all share in the wealth of our country's natural resources and build a future where the energy we all need to survive is zero carbon, secure, and affordable for all.